All right, this is Two Hot Heads on Cannabis, and we have Judge Jim Gray, uh, vice presidential candidate, Judge Jim Gray, on the phone with us right now. Hello, Jim. How are you doing today? You know, I'm just doing great. Thank you. I am happy, excited, and life is good. I, I think it, it should be right now. This is big news. We were thrilled to hear that Governor Gary Johnson had chosen you as his running mate. So, of course, we had you on the show. Thanks again for coming back. We are, we are so pleased to have you here. Um, well, but- it's always a pleasure to talk with good people. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I'm just, just convinced that the people of the United States of America, when they see not only what Governor Gary Johnson and I talk about, but what he, we have actually done, I'm just convinced that they will believe that not only they'll vote against Romney or, or Obama, but they'll actually vote for Governor Gary Johnson. I'm just convinced of that. I, I agree on that. that Absolutely. I, th- I think the big question for us is how do we get them to hear, hear that message? How do, they, how, how do we present that record? Because Gary got ignored in, 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 the, in the primaries for Republican Party. In the media, there's a billion well, dollars in this. How do we get you guys to 15%? You're pulling at like 8%, which I think is phenomenal. I'm very excited about this campaign. How do we get to that next level? I can tell you our strategy is to break the remainder of the election into two phases. And the first phase, and it ends at the end of September, we must be polling at 15%. If we are, that means that the governor will be a part of those three presidential debates I will be a part of the one vice presidential debate, and if that happens, or when it happens, all the rules will change. People will see who we are. They will see that, in fact, uh, we will bring prosperity back to the United States. Of America. We will bring equal opportunity back. We will bring liberty back to the United States of America. So we're now polling, like you said, it's, as I understand it, nationwide. Uh, at the at their convention uh, three weeks ago, we were polling at seven percent. Now we're polling at 8%. Yeah. Excellent. There you yesterday go. Yesterday morning in, in Arizona, we're polling at 9%. Yeah. That Wonderful. That is even talking about the Ron Paul supporters who, yeah. after the Republican convention, uh, we are sisters. We're, we're sisters in spirit. Mm-hmm. They will very likely come to us. They have nowhere else to go, as well as numbers and numbers of other groups. Uh, for example, obviously, people who care about drug policy reform. Uh, Governor Johnson and I have endorsed the SAFE initiative in California, which would repeal the death penalty. And regardless of your philosophy, it's clear the death penalty is not working. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we are the only ones that stand for that. Certainly not Obama, certainly not Romney. Mm-hmm. All of these various people, we will be polling at 15%. Yes. And hold on to your hat. Yeah. Absolutely. We cannot wait. We want to we wanna do everything we possibly can to help get you there. Um, And I think you just started answering uh, one of my big questions for you guys is so clearly, I mean, Governor Gary Johnson, he he made a very like, you know, the the move that he made to sign you on as his vice president, you know, was is so crucial for all of us who are working for drug reform. It's so clearly, you know, he felt that that was a, you know, a huge enough issue, you know, to reach out to everybody on that you know, on that specific issue. But what about some of the other issues that you guys stand for? Clearly, you're on the Libertarian Party. Um, you're running, you said, you know, about, you're, you're talking about civil liberties. Um, but, and, and you just mentioned the death penalty and repealing the death penalty, which I'm completely in support of. Um, but what about some of the other issues, you know, um, in terms of you're talking about the economy? Um, you know, that's obviously the big issue right now that most people are talking about. Um, but, you know, other, other sorts of issues, you know, um, gay rights and immigration, and I just, I'd like to hear where you, where you stand on all of those issues as well. Well, of course, but before we leave the drug policy issue, let me clarify here, because I have been speaking publicly for months saying that Governor Gary Johnson is the most qualified person to be President of the United Absolutely States. Absolutely, he I is, know of. Too, yeah. And he came out after being the governor of the state of New Mexico, mm-hmm. looking at just the drug policy issue. And it just, he simply conducted his audit and found that it wasn't working, and not only understood that, which is, puts him head and shoulders above most other people, mm-hmm. but also had the courage to come out and say so and change it. Yeah. And he will do the same thing with regard to these other issues as well. Now, our economy is clearly the number one issue because mm-hmm. we do the, the most critical issue of the security of the United States of America is our economy. I mean, if we have a weak economy, we're vulnerable. And in fact, you look at the Roman Empire, they were never <laughs> defeated from without. 
they crumbled from within. They overextended. Same thing with the Ottoman Empire, the Soviet Empire, all these things. Guess where we are today? The American so, Empire. <laughs> the sobering, sobering thought. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fine. My generation is going to be fine. I have our house and our investments. But our children are in deep trouble, yeah. and our grandchildren are bankrupt. So today, the federal government, under either the Republicans or the Democrats or both, for every dollar it's, it spends, we're borrowing 43 cents. Now, just think of that. No household could possibly do that. No company could possibly do that. That's what the government is doing under the Democrats and the Republicans. So we have said, and we will do it, we will submit a balanced budget to Congress, and we will reduce spending by 43%. And that includes the military. No, I was in the military. I was actually in Vietnam and everything, too. I know how important it is to, to have our troops well-provisioned, well-taken care of, and even after they're out for the Veterans Administration to make sure that they're protected. But the footprint of the, of the American military is huge today, that there's something like 192 countries that the United Nations recognizes all around the world, and we have military bases in more than 130 of them. I mean, that's expensive. It's depleting our troops. We should figure out which ones are necessary for our protection, for our military strength, and bring the rest of them home. That will result in savings. So even if you cut back the military, we're not reducing our strength or our provisions, but we are reducing our footprint. Uh, and there, it just goes on and on. Well, I, I'm so many, so many of our agencies in federal government that simply should not be there. Uh, and I'll agree with Governor Perry on, on one of these things, and actually I'll remember which ones they are. We shouldn't have a <laughs> Department of Education. <laughs> Education should be a local thing, not a federal government thing. Absolutely. And honestly, really not one for the states. Yep. It should be local and the parents. Mm-hmm. So we should abolish the Department of Education. Oh, yeah. of I'm Energy, a little, I'm a little. I'm not. Of commerce. I get rid of them. <laughs> our I'm a little concerned spending, about that. But. And we can balance our budget because governments do not generate revenue. They do not create wealth. They only take it away. So the wealth creation comes from mostly small businesses, and we need to have a climate that will encourage those businesses. That's the way we get jobs. I have a small business question for you. Um, Mary Lou's Coffee, I I don't know if you've heard of this. This is a local regional chain um, in Massachusetts, and the federal government right now is investigating them. It's the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Uh, They hire somewhat younger girls, probably in their teens to late 20s, who are generally like the cheerleader types, very nice girls, intelligent, good customer service. Mary Lou's Coffee is very popular on the South Shore of Massachusetts. And the federal government seems to be trying to shut them down because of their hiring practices. They're investigating them. It's hit the media locally. Would you, if, 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 the, if there was a Gary Johnson administration in charge, would you pull back the federal government from harassing a smaller chain? My goodness, my goodness, of course. You know, there, I was talking earlier this morning to a friend. There are three ways that you can avoid poverty. If you abide by these three rules, you will not be in poverty. The first is graduate from high school, at least get a high school degree. Secondly, don't have children outside of marriage. And third, get a job, any job. That's the way you get on the road to prosperity. And if these small companies are hiring people, you know, I believe in child work laws, too. I'm not saying we're going to go to sweatshops, but you get on the bottom rung of the economic ladder by getting a job, developing a work ethic, understanding the importance of a dollar and, and earning the, and the extra dollar. That's where you start becoming an adult. You start becoming successful. And the government is impeding this. Let me, let me tell you something hugely that is our government causing our stagnation. We all know, at least we should by now, that this whole housing crisis was caused by government, was caused by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, because the banks would make stupid loans transparently in which the the borrowers couldn't pay it back. But as long as the federal government was insuring them, they could go forward in doing it. And that caused these problems, plus a lack of oversight from the Securities Exchange Commission, etc. But now, what we need is in order to get our prosperity back, we need to have a, an economy that's stimulated. And how you do that is you find people with good business plans that are economically viable, and then you loan them money. Well, mm-hmm. I talked to a bank manager just about three weeks ago, and she said, you know, I, I don't want your money. 
because if we get money, it costs us money, and we can't loan it out. So I don't want to take in money. And then she said something all of your listeners That's need crazy. to listen to and understand. 30% of my employees do nothing but attempt to comply with government regulations. Yep. And we can't loan money because the government regulations are strangling us. Oh, yeah. So now the federal government is standing in the way of receiving our prosperity back. Yep. Governor Gary Johnson, as president, and I will, in fact, we need some regulations, but we'll cut them back, make them understandable, have many, many fewer regulators, because that's a stranglehold as well. We will bring prosperity back by doing that. Absolutely. Of course, we have other uh, approaches as well. I don't know how much time you have, but, no, but we you can know, talk that, about lots of them. I, I could say my real life experience, 100%. I was a financial advisor, licensed four different licenses for like 10 years. When I worked for the big companies, they took care of all that. When I went independent, about 30 to 40% of my time was based on what exactly what you said, trying to deal with the regulations and the paperwork and the tests and the this and the that. and the, It just never ended. And I was a little guy and I never did anything wrong. It was so, it, it put me out of business. It really did. Well, let me tell you, the George W. Bush administration, when they went out of office in eight years, we had 200,000 more regulators being paid by the federal government than we did when he started. And now Obama, as I understand it, administration, has broken that record just in four years. You know, yes, we need antitrust laws, and yes, we need OSHA safety in the marketplace. I mean, we need those things, but we just overdo it so much. And then, like you say, if you have a regulator, a bureaucrat, they have to justify their own existence. They have to find something wrong. They have to show that they're, that they're doing something. And so they stifle business. And, and we get into the ADA when I got that in the court system. You know, I was a judge for 25 years. And the Americans with Disabilities Act, if your poster warning people about various violations was, you know, a quarter inch too low or your, your entryway was, was a little bit small or whatever, you know, we're just strangling ourselves with all of these picky little things. We've got to get back to what works, which is private enterprise, people earning money, and uh, in being responsible for their actions, right. and the Governor Johnson administration and Judge Jim Gray, we will do that. GGJ and JJG will come. <laughs> to I like that. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right. So, from someone who I personally come from, you know, a more liberal, more democratic side of you know the political spectrum, and so one thing that I personally care about, and I feel like you know a, a good amount of our listeners care about is also while maintaining, you know, a limited, a more limited s government, still also maintaining um, government programs that are proven to help, you know, individuals succeed, such as, you know, subsidizing public higher education and supporting people going to college and job readiness programs and, you know, housing for families and health care. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? How, how would you protect... Uh, you know, those people like, you know, and I certainly agree with your sentiment about, you know, people having a job and, you know, even if they're on the lowest rung, but certainly the cost of living ha is, you know, much inflated in certain areas and it's, it's difficult, you know, um, for some people to, to get above the poverty or, you know, right around hovering around the poverty line. And yeah. so, you know, for them, I think it is important to have social services so how would you well of course how but would the difference but in the difference in the libertarian philosophy which is not always warm and fuzzy you know it's not oh poor baby the government will take care of you which is basically the democrat philosophy yeah. we, we, libertarians understand that we need government as well but government is the last resort instead of the first resort exactly. and that makes an enormous difference so that with regard to health care which is critically important you know, I would get the government completely out of health care for those of us who can take care of ourselves. Okay. You know, I don't need the government to set up yep. all of these programs, restrictions, and everything else. Uh, I should spend my own health care dollar. Uh, I will get value for it. When I was growing up in the 50s and 60s, it wasn't even a topic of conversation that yeah. we didn't have reasonable health care. And why, why, did, why did it change? You know, get why? the government out of it. If Medicare started having the government dictate in, in health care. And now, of course, P.J. O'Rourke is absolutely right when he says if you think health care is expensive now, wait till it's free.
But then there are others, like you say, and you're right, that simply cannot take care of themselves. Well, first of all, if the government's stepping forward, all of the private sector and the charities and the hospitals will take three steps back because the government preempts the field. You so know, they would come forward again. But if there are some, charity, after all of this, I'd... that cannot take care of themselves, then let's have a government clinic in which the government pays money uh, on contract, and the money is paid actually for doctors, nurses, and medicine. And at that point, then, instead of all this bureaucracy, all this fraud, all this administration, just like when I was in the Navy, basically I and my dependents would be taken care of. And we could fold that in with the VA hospitals and the military hospitals and the rest, where you actually pay the money for medical services, and people will be better off. Yes, you'll have a copay, so that'll restrict whether you're going to just go there because you're lonely. But uh, otherwise, we will have that fallback position, the, the safety net, as it were, on health care. And, and in terms of, uh, you know, uh, higher education, what do, you, what do you feel like on that? Well, okay, a legitimate question. And I certainly believe in having student loans to be able for people to be able to raise themselves. But... Uh, having the government involved in those loans is an absolute mistake. The government, and now we're having um, Mr. Romney pander to these students, mm -hmm. saying, oh, you know, ain't it awful, we're going to lower your, your, your loans. Basically, no, I thought he just said to move in with your I mean, parents. Straight out buying their votes with your money. Yeah. So if you are after high school, if you're going to be in the elite and go to college, I don't think that people that didn't graduate from high school who are paying their taxes owe you to, ha to pay for your college education. Mm -hmm. I think if you're going to become a lawyer, I was talking with one yesterday, oh, I'm in law school, oh, my student loans are so high, and the government keeps doing this and doing that. Get the government out of it, but w by and large, when you're done with law school, you're going to be in the elite, you're going to be able to receive a higher wage, and I think that if you're making an investment in yourself for that, that you should be responsible for your investment. I, I just don't have a problem with that. I right. I was and, more, I'm more wondering about, uh, you know, government investing in, you know, grants and like public, you know, Pell Grants and, and those sort of systems so that people, you know, merit-based, you know, scholarships and grants that, y that aren't just provided by private, you know, charitable organizations because, you know, I, that is one argument I have with libertarians often is just charitable giving is got, not... I, I got to give the other side of that, Heather. <laughs> Our view, my viewpoint, and I think a lot of libertarians, is that when, you, when the federal government subsidizes any, any product... What is the guaranteed result? That product will be way more expensive in the future. And if you look at health care, and if you look at education, just what Jim said, my grandfather and his generation, they could work their way through college and pay that tuition themselves. They didn't need a family. They didn't need a loan. Now these kids are paying a hundred thousand dollars. It was far plus. far less percentage. But, but, but of that's their because overall. of the subsidy. And, and and the answer is more subsidy. You know, if we take if we get rid of the subsidies. Then the price goes down and people can afford it and they can get a private loan. And, and, well, and that's absolutely right. The government makes a mess of things. I mean, just ask yourself the question. Let's go back to health care for a minute. Who is in a, this, this one question should answer everybody's concerns about this issue. Who is in a better position to decide where and how your children should be educated? You as a parent or the government? Now, that's a really easy question to answer. But the government is stepping forward and getting involved in all of this stuff, and it just makes it worse. So let's get the government out of it. Health care issues. If you go to your doctor today and your, your elbow hurts or whatever else, the doctor will look at you and say, hey, do you want an MRI? And you think, oh, well, the government, now I have my insurance, and I, get, I pay a lot of money for my medical insurance, so I should have a Cadillac. If you were to look at your doctor and say, well, maybe so, but what good is it going to do me? What will it show, and how much will it cost? Your doctor will look at you like you're crazy. You know, he doesn't even know how much it costs. That's foolish. Right. So we, the consumer should be in a position to decide whether this is worth doing, how much it's going to cost, and then the consumer, as the patient, will actually be a partner with the medical doctor on their own health care instead of just the recipient. If the whole system is messed up by government, and we're going to bring it back. Yeah. I like it. Well, yeah. Let me ask you about uh, like immigration rights. There's been a lot going on in Massachusetts right now with these, uh, with the way the state police are acting towards illegal immigrants. Sure. And I think this is an issue that divides uh, the Republican Party in a lot of respects, and sometimes the liberals. Like, how do you feel about pulling people over? The police pulling people over. They have these 
I guess the, the the federal government's getting really involved in this through the Obama the administration. Commu- isn't this the yeah. Safe Communities Act? Yeah. Do you and su- al- already places are opting out of it, but it basically means that even if you're pulled over for a minor traffic infraction, something that's not even uh, an arrestable offense, that they can check your immigration status and deport you uh, well, based okay. on your immigration status. This, this issue really burns me because if the, it's really one of the most simple things to address. And if the Republicans or Democrats wanted to resolve this and re- repair this system, they could have decades ago. They could have decades ago. They don't want to. They give it lip service, but many very powerful, influential Republicans really like the cheap labor, and so they don't want to change it. And many very influential and powerful Democrats love the idea of all these people coming to our country that will eventually vote for Democrats. So they don't want to change it. And in the meantime, really, really large numbers of good people are being harmed. So I say, Governor Johnson says, let's give out work visas fairly easily to people. We'll have a background check, see if they're of moral good, good moral character, you know, and see if they can come here and and uh, and, and uh, make a living. And in fact, if they can show that they're, they can support their families also, then let them bring their families here. Absolutely. Punish employers that do not that, that hire people that do not have that work visa. And this isn't a path to citizenship as such, although we should make such a path for people that have been here for a long time mm-hmm. and are a good moral character. But that will resolve this. So then you can come across the border. You can just show your work visa. You don't have to get a coyote to bring you across. It isn't violent. You can go home when you want to, etc. And That's that way we the way can... you fix the system. But, and let me quickly say, I'm very sympathetic with the states. You know, it doesn't cost the federal government pretty much anything to have all of these illegal immigrants here. The cost is paid by the states, the school districts, the local governments. We have lots of people, honestly, that are illegal immigrants or undocumented workers who are in our prisons, who, who mm-hmm. have uh, in, in our health care system, etc. And so these locals who have no power whatsoever are hemorrhaging. And so I, I'm sympathetic with these states that actually try to pass these laws out of desperation. They should probably sue the federal government and say, look, federal government, it's your business, it's your legal ability to do something about this. You should pay the costs of these people yeah. being here. And if that were the case, then the federal government would change it. But it's, the problem is, like I said a minute ago, it, the Republicans and Democrats do not want to. Governor Gary Johnson will. All right. So you don't, you, you, it sounds like you, you support real reform, a, a real reform and not these types of uh, policing efforts as much. No, the, 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 if you put in our system, like I just said, the policing issues will start going away. Yeah. Right. You know, if people can't, people come here, they don't come here to get on welfare. Come on, they come here to work. They come exactly. here like Thank our you. ancestors Thank did, you. to have a better life for themselves and their children. How can you ever criticize that? Uh, true. Thank no, you very much. That's what makes America great. The system stinks. I never say bad things about people who are undocumented here. They actually are are, are living the American dream. It's good for them. All right. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm really, I appreciate you saying that um, and advocating for them because there's not many, uh, you know, let alone presidential candidates, but politicians at all who are willing to say that. So, or I hate this political situation. (laughs) I agree. Republicans and the Democrats have done. (laughs) very bad things to my great country and uh, the, the voters will have no option but to vote for a third party the libertarian party to come in and broadcast the heinous job that the republicans and democrats are doing today i will be president of the senate we will i'll use every of my available power to have the sessions of the senate broadcast on you know c-span or something like that to bring transparency Good. and when the republicans and democrats don't want to fix this immigration system for example we will go over their heads to the people and we will say publicly any of these senators any of these members of congress that do not vote for this they do not have the best interest of the united states of america at heart they are into the special interest yeah. Shame on them now, Kick them out of office. That's exactly it's what we It's incredibly need. refreshing yeah. to hear that being said. And um, just so you know, we're working out here, uh, myself and, and many folks, my, my partner and a whole crew are working on uh, getting your signatures to put you on the ballot in Massachusetts. Um, and you. we're really thrilled to be doing that. Um, but I wanted to ask also, what, wh- how can other people get involved 
um, in terms of supporting your campaign and making sure that you do get to your, you know, 15% and that this message does get out there? You know something? We have to get make this personal. We have to have people, because it's so important for our country. Take it personally. Don't just sit here and say how smart we are and, and you know, all of this is wonderful. Get our message. Go to GaryJohnson2012.com. That's our campaign website. Uh, you certainly can donate, and we can use that money. We'll never have the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars that the Democrats and Republicans do. We'll use it wisely, but we'll use it well. Look at our issues, and then spread this word to your email world. You know, pass it along. Definitely. If you want to, you can send an email to me. It's Jim P. Gray at sbcglobal.net. <laughs> Jim P. Gray, G R A Y, at sbcglobal.net. And I will respond to you, or I'll have someone respond to you with our message. You look at it, I'm sure you'll agree with it, and then pass it along to your email world. Absolutely. If people take it personally, just pass it along to your email group and have them pass it along to theirs. We'll have our 15% without even doing anything further. This must be taken personally. And I think that when more people realize it, just like we're saying, they will and they will never, ever be sorry. <laughs> we wow. certainly, yeah. we certainly are not. We I'm are... doing it. We're doing it. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're all doing it. We're certainly not sorry. We yeah. are so, so unbelievably thrilled to have you yes. on the show. We are so excited that you are taking this, this huge leap Haha, <laughs> get it? Forward yeah, yeah. in From your uh, political, you know, career. Um, certainly one of the m most well-spoken and passionate, um, you know, guests, you know, th Thank that you. we could ever hope to have on here. And, and, you know, I think you'll make a fantastic vice president. Well, then call me again, and we'll do this again in the future. Absolutely. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Remind your, remind your listeners to go to our website, Governor Gary Johnson. Just, just to, to maybe finish this, uh, he was rated, or every all oh, yeah. these people were rated by the ACLU. You Number care about one. civil liberties? Yep. Right. You know, we would repeal the so-called Patriot Act. We would get uh, close Guantanamo. We would not allow anyone, be it citizens or anyone in our custody, to be detained without bringing criminal charges and affording them a trial in yeah. civilian or military courts. Yes. Romney, you know, the ACLU had these 25 questions, and they gave out what they called 25 torches of liberty. So what was the result? Romney came out with zero torches. <laughs> Obama came out with 16, and... Gary Johnson came out with 23. And he was number Not one. Not only is he fiscally yeah. <laughs> responsible, we are socially tolerant. And just to finish one more comment, Obama came out recently with regard to this marriage equality issue. That's our issue. He first sent up a trial balloon, as everybody should focus on, with, with Vice President Biden on Meet the Press where he just kind of casually threw out this trial balloon. Well, I'm not so sure about gay marriage. Maybe yes, maybe no, but I don't speak to the administration. It was all choreographed. They wanted to see what the result would yeah. be. And then the following Wednesday, of course, Obama made his statement. The next day, he was then going to George Clooney's house and basically got $15 million yeah. out of one fundraiser. They charged so much on that one, he had too. come yeah. out well, and, and kind of in favor of gay marriage, but all he did was make some nice noises. He said, well, this is mm -hmm. a state's issue, so basically yeah. he isn't going to have to do anything. Yep. Exactly. Governor Gary Johnson treats this as a constitutional issue. This is a civil liberties constitutional issue, a federal issue. Absolutely. So that we, and this was written into our website before, it's written into my book as well. We stand for this. He gives it lip service and plays That's politics. That's the thing, too, Gary. Those people need to vote for Governor Gary Johnson for president and actually have this enforced. Judge, Absolutely. yeah, definitely. Judge Jim Gray, before you go, those folks in Hollywood that gave all that money, I mean, I think he was charging like, he was charging the most highest amount of money per plate I've ever seen for, yes. at that event with George Clooney. Yes. Are they stupid? Because <laughs> cause I'm an activist. If, if he said that about medical marijuana... Again, I would be mad at him because I know that it means nothing. He's basically saying, oh, I'm with you guys, but I ain't going to do anything about it. And, and you guys, your campaign is saying, not only are we with, with you, we're going to do something about it. And that's the difference. Exactly. And why isn't George Clooney and his Hollywood gang, or, or maybe they are, but are you getting support from them? Are you looking to get a lot of money like Obama just got from that Hollywood crowd? Uh, 
I don't have an answer to that. I was appalled that this stuff happened. But I can tell you, as a judge for 25 years in Orange County, California, I would do the right thing for the right reason. As the vice president of the United States, I would as well. And Governor Gary Johnson, in his two terms as governor of New Mexico, did the right thing for the right reason. He has no ego. He's just a really good, intelligent man who will do the right thing for the right reason in this time of need for the United States of America. But it will not happen unless you take it personally. And you can make this happen if you take it personally and send our message with your seal of approval to your friends. I guarantee you that we will get our 15 percent. We will show that we're viable. We will show the country that we are really the only rational choice to bring us back to that prosperity, equal opportunity, and liberties that we now are losing. Sir, I think you have gotten our vote. You got my vote. Thank you. You've had it for a while. Most certainly. Once again, a a complete pleasure. Um, GovernorGaryJohnson.com. Please support uh, Judge Jim Gray. Thank you so much for being on the show once again. We'd love to have you back. Um, and good luck with everything that you're doing right we'll now. We'll keep following you. Life is good. You, yes, you're it welcome. sure is. And I enjoy it. I believe <laughs> in it, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Now, for heaven's sake, get to work. All right. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds yeah. good. <laughs> thank you so much. We're You're getting welcome. Work. Good luck to us all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I love that guy. Gary Johnson, 2012.com. That was Judge Jim Gray. You heard it. Yes. Uh, that's a good advice to people, too. I like he's telling people Take that. it personal. Get a job. Take it personal. Get to work. Get to work. And we're the two hotheads on cannabis, and it's about 4.20. So as we say that, we're going to get to work, and we'll be back after 4.20 sometime. Oh, tell them the number. 617-606-4122. Talk to you soon. Bring you a special broadcast. Ding dong. It's 4.20.